I'm a scientist at University of Zurich and Yale University, and I'm drawn to study things that very few do. The two substances I've worked with the most in the last 10 years are psilocybin and LSD. Both are classic psychedelics, which have been used in the treatment of psychiatric disorders in the 1950s and 60s. For political reasons, re research and therapy with these substances was put on hold almost completely after they were made illegal in the early 1970s. Within the last decade, however, interest in the effects of these substances has re-emerged. Psychedelics induce a strong altered state of consciousness, unlike almost any other substance. People describe vivid visual illusions. Things in their environment might start to move or change color or form. The room may appear smaller or larger. Time passes very differently and the body may feel different. Some describe it like being in a fairy tale. For others, it's more like a trip into their own soul. Often people also describe the feeling of being very connected to the rest of the world, nature and other people. What do these substances do in the brain? First of all, they stimulate a certain receptor, the so-called serotonin 2A receptor. This changes how the cells in our brain communicate with each other. A lot of cells together form different brain structures. One important structure is the thalamus. It filters information from our environment and only the important information will pass through and reach our cortex for further processing. What happens to the thalamus when we are under the influence of a psychedelic? We know that the thalamus is more strongly connected to specific parts of the brain, especially those which are responsible for processing sensory information and for processing ourselves. Much of the back of our brain is dedicated to processing visual input. We have seen increased connectivity between these areas and the thalamus under the influence of psychedelics. The posterior cingulate cortex, the red dot on the slide, is directly involved when we are processing information about ourselves. In a study with LSD, we have seen that the thalamus is sending more information to the posterior cingulate cortex, indicating that it is filtering less information about ourselves. This can lead to a decreased self-other distinction and a much stronger feeling of being connected to the world. This slide here shows changes in connectivity or communication patterns induced by psychedelics, LSD and psilocybin compared to placebo. The red and yellow colors mean increased connectivity, the blue colors mean decreased connectivity. Under the influence of psychedelics, areas which are responsible for processing sensory information like our visual cortex, our auditory cortex, our somatosensory cortex, are far more connected with each other. These are the areas in red and yellow. But of course, we do not process our visual input separate from touch or auditory input. In the brain, these perceptions need to be integrated into a coherent perception so we can understand it and react to it. This integration is happening in our associative regions. These regions are less connected under the influence of a psychedelic. These are the blue regions in this slide. And that means that the way we put all this information together is different under the influence of a psychedelic. So because we know that the thalamus is sending more information to areas which are responsible for, for example, processing ourselves, and at the same time, the integration of this information is different. We experience the world and ourselves in a new way. And here's where it becomes interesting for patients suffering from depression, anxiety or addiction. The challenge in their therapy is to get patients to process their realities in a more constructive and hopeful way. Psychedelics may help them to break free from pathological thinking patterns and paved the way for finding new insight into problems. This has been reported by patients who underwent psychedelic assisted therapy in various studies for the treatment of depression, anxiety and addiction. 
psychedelics also change how we interact with other people. Often participants report that they feel more connected to other people and react differently to their behavior. There are many studies which have shown that psychedelics increase empathy and that people behave more altruistically. Also, they are less sensitive to social rejection. And these are all things that may help people suffering from depression, anxiety and addiction. I believe studying these effects with patients is very useful because it may allow patients to feel more connected to their environment and their therapists. Depressed patients, for example, react more strongly to negative social encounters. And psychedelics show signs of normalizing this negative bias, allowing them to engage in social interaction without strong negative feelings. Depressed and addicted patients also often feel isolated from their family and loved ones. Psychedelics seem to allow them to feel closer to them again, which likely has a positive influence on depressive symptoms. My experience with studying these substances is profound. While it will take more studies, I believe that eventually psychedelic assisted therapy may become an accepted and effective treatment approach for psychiatric disorders. There are many open questions that still need to be addressed in future studies. But what can be said already is that the studies suggest that these molecules can bring relief to people suffering from addiction, depression and anxiety. It is my great hope that my work and the work of others at Johns Hopkins University, Imperial College London and various academic centers all over the world testing these substances in clinical studies will help people who are suffering and who are urgently waiting for novel treatment approaches. Thank you for listening.